real quick, Sean. So tell us how, uh, obviously I know you well, you know, me and me and you've known each other for many years. And, uh, but for people that don't know you, uh, just give them a quick, you know, 60 second year experience in the sales industry and then how you came to family first life. So ironically today is one year exactly, uh, that I quit my nine to five. Whoa. I didn't know that. That is That's my awesome. one year anniversary. That I, <clears throat> it was the end of my two weeks and, uh, we hit the road for New Mexico and I worked for a month officially full time. Oh, so I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the, the short of it, man, obviously you came to FFL, you and I are buddies from, uh, you know, 10 years back and we had worked together in a lot of sales gigs before. And I've done everything from selling trash, uh, trash service to newspapers, to cable, to lawn service, you name it. We sold it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, we never made money like this. Right. Leads like this. And so when you came over from your, your practice company, you know, you said, Hey, this is what I'm making. My wife said, why are you not doing that? And I said, good point. So uh, I got my license in a week it was part-time for about four months, just really trying to believe in myself, you know, I get through all that stuff. And then once I realized I had to just put the numbers in my favor, it was a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you, um, you, you told me something so funny one time because I used to call you and a few other friends when I was first getting started, right? And I after like a big sale or like yeah. a big, I would leave and like freak out, like I made $5,000. And I remember, I don't remember if I overheard her or you told me about it later, but one time I FaceTimed you and your answer and your wife was just like, ah, how much money did he make this time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, you got into it. So, so awesome. So you had, um, like, I think many agents getting into the insurance industry for the first time, even though you had been in sales for a while, you had mm -hmm. a, I, I would say you, in a sense, you hit the ground running cause you had some sales right away, but mm -hmm. I would still say you had a pretty rocky kind of back and forth start. So let's, let's talk to, let's uh, tell agents about that. Talk to us about that. So I don't think it was the sales process per se, that was really my kryptonite at first. It was being independent mm. uh, for a lot of people, uh, especially me, there was a big learning curve in the discipline and belief level you have to have starting out being self-employed. And I was not in a great financial position at all. And I could not get over some of those mental hurdles and the fear of what if this doesn't work? Mm. And so I think I would sabotage myself by exercising my freedoms and kind of like what you and I were talking about recently, where I have the freedom to work or not work. And, you know, I, I didn't really have the discipline to choose the right one every time. Right. And I think the rockiness was just a lot of self-sabotage, mm. uh, not really... I would listen to coaching, but not really, but be too afraid to actually putting into practice for fear of who knows what. Um, and then just not following the system, dialing the phone, running 30 appointments a week, and then even not tracking, okay, look, if I run 30 appointments, it's going to be okay. And so not paying attention to some of those uh, activities that I can dictate really kind of put me on an emotional and mental roller coaster for my first few months. Sure. Sure, man. That's that's true of so many agents, uh, entrepreneurs in general, but especially in the insurance industry. So, talk to us about look, taking a little closer look in, because obviously I get to see it. You know, being your friend and you know, up line, you know, up, up up close. You know, you you had a really I could kind of say come to Jesus moment, right? We had a lot of different things. Um, I don't know how people say it. Poker's in the fire. You know what I mean? A lot of things going on. And we even had a conversation where me, just as your friend, I was like, look, maybe this isn't the right choice for you right now. You know, this will still be here down the line. And then you shocked me and you came back and you were like, no, me and my wife talked. Um, I'm going all in on this. So talk to us about what brought that personal decision for you. So we were planning a trip to, I, I knew from the get go, look, I'm making 3,500 a month, you know, you're making, you know, 3,500 a day. Right. So it's like, all right, then the numbers make sense. And I remember when you came down to kind of, uh, ride along with me, I had a pretty good day by my standards at my last job. Mm -hmm. uh, you were like, Hey, Sean, how much will you make on that? And I said, I don't know, a thousand or something. And you're like, 
do you know how much you would have made if you sold insurance at that level? I was like, shut up, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, so kind of going through the part-time and actually, man, there was one point where I kind of somehow suckered myself into thinking I was going to do this, not work hard and make a lot of money. So like both, both gigs, this, you know, this side hustle I had at the time and my day job just totally flopped because I was so just mentally not in the right spot thinking I was going to, you know, make all this money uh, tomorrow. Right. So then I kind of gave it a pause for a bit. And then when I revisited the conversation, me and her talked and we wanted to go visit some family. And I said, look, the only way I'm going for a month is if I quit my job. And uh, she had so much confidence in me, probably triple uh, the amount I had. And so um, I said, all right, here's what I'll do. I'll buy these leads. I'll book, you know, I, I won't never ran more than four or five appointments in a week. I need to, you know, let's book 10 appointments, 12 appointments. That'll kind of show me what it'll look like over the course of a day, two days in the field, split up over three days. Right. So I ran those and it was kind of like, look, that was by that Friday, I needed to be able to put my two weeks in so we could hit the road. So these next two or three days was, was do or die. Right. So then, um, man, I flopped the first seven all porched me or canceled and the mm -hmm. last one didn't buy. And so I think in between that you and I had talked and I was trying to decide, Hey, you know, I, I don't know, man, is this for me? But I had door knocked one final expense lead that I hadn't resolved yet by that. Uh, and I door knocked it. She said, come back Friday. I went back and I, and I sold it. I told Christina that morning, I said, look, a lot of this is going to hinge on how this sale goes. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I sold it like 2,100 AP. So then I think right after that is when you and I spoke and you're like, hey, man, you just from your heart, I don't know if this is the right time for you to do this. And I said, actually, I'm put, I put my two weeks in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we had had two conversations, right? We had had one the night before that I, I had felt was pretty definitive. Like, it was like, I don't know if this is right for you. And you're like, yeah, 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 you're right. And then, so I had kind of thought maybe it was already done. And yeah, that very next day, you're like, all right, man. Well, yeah, no hard feelings. You're like, yeah, I just quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> man, wow, that's such a good memory. I complete, wow, a year ago today, I got to mark out my calendar or something, man. <laughs> that's uh, that's so cool. And so, so talk to us after that. So. You quit your job. You went on that trip, which you ran some business, quite a bit of business on that trip, if I remember. I did, yeah. So my first week, I bought about 100 second chance mortgage protection leads, and I ran 30 appointments and closed about nine grand. And what's funny about that is, so the first two days, I booked 18 appointments off of those, and I could not tell you the difference between mortgage protection and life insurance. I had no idea what I was talking about or doing uh, mm -hmm. in the house. And uh, so you and I talked a lot in between appointments and man, and I just psyched myself up to get run over that first day, but I knew I needed to do that. And, and I sure as heck did. Uh, I went 0 for 11, you know, between, I had all the, the bad stuff, but I went into it next day, nine appointments. And uh, by the end of the day, I, I found a couple uh, who needed products that I knew about. And I ended up with about 5K that day and then closed the rest of the week out uh, just under 9K for that week. I think I did 13 or 14 for the month while I was there. Sean, I want to ask you something because because you said something like three or four times in a row now, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe two or three, where we're talking about you went this and you went 0 for 7. You went this, you went 0 for 11. And you went this, you know, you didn't, you didn't have any this day, you know. Talk yeah. to us about, so obviously just like anybody learning something, you got to overcome a lot of failure, you know, to become good. And I see a lot of people, you know, they don't ever make it through that journey. Like they, they hit that failure and it stops them and, the, and they're, they're, they're done right there. Talk to us about like, what motivated you? Was it, was it seeing me and some other friends? Was it seeing the culture? Was it belief in yourself or in the system? What motivated you to go past those failures when you had those rough days in the field um, and go on and become successful after that? What was it for you? Uh, part of it was my wife didn't doubt me. 
you know, I had the support at home of like, look, you'll, you'll figure this out. You know, she told me when we got married, Hey, I give you five years. We'll be making six figures, right? <laughs> It'll be five years for us in, in December that we got married. And hey, here I am, right? you are. <laughs> so, so that was part of it. Um, the other thing was, uh, obviously the support from our team, you know, we were all at the same time trying to figure this out. Right. But then also looking, you know, going on Facebook and seeing this random person, you know, they write 4K, this random person writing this. And really it just came down to, okay, I'm not doing all of the things I can control. So I can't, although it sucks, I can't complain too much. Right. I'm not failing if I'm not doing everything that I can control, dialing the phone enough, running enough appointments. I'm not sitting with enough people. Those things can all be fixed. But at the end of the day, man, having, you know, a, a little girl and a, a newborn son to go home to and look them in the eyes and, and it have to admit, at least inside that I didn't work hard and I failed them. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do that. That was yeah. not an option, even though maybe externally I, I was right. I, I went over seven. I felt like a failure, but the long term, that wasn't an option for me. Sure. Sure. So I see a really good combination for one support personally, you know, obviously by your wife and your, and, you know, our, your group, you know, of friends that, that were doing well to, you know, your belief in just what you saw. And I, I tell everybody, you know, and at this time, had you gone to a conference yet or no? I think our first one was in October. First one was in October. So Which was pretty timely because now I will say the mistakes I did make after my first month, my first month, I would say was kind of like a pseudo vacation. I worked a lot, played a lot, kind of that. But when I came back, I did the same thing. Yeah. It was like, hey, let's go to the beach. You know, I'm going to take every Wednesday off. I'll run 12 appointments the other three days and and we'll be good. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember having that call with you. I was coming back from like a two hour away appointment. It was, I ran like three appointments, two hours away. Like, what am I doing? (laughs) I remember I called you and I was like, Gabe, I, uh, I'm out of money. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And it was completely my fault. And you just shot me super straight, man. Like, well, dude, you're full time. Like you're in it. I don't really know what to tell you. So you just got to figure it out. Okay. Well, I guess we'll figure it out. And uh, I started using my credit card, man. Like I didn't have an option. Yeah, that that mentality, I think, I mean, they say all business owners or 90% of business owners uh, not all, but a uh, 90% like fail their first year in business. And I think it's exactly what you described right there. On, on one hand, you're making the best money you've ever made. And then you're spending the most money you've ever spent. <laughs> and then you are, you know, the ups and downs of business, especially when you're learning something new. Like yeah. if you're not working consistently, it's going to smack you in the face real quick you know, real, real quick. So talk to us about that change that you made. Cause obviously the Sean today and the Sean a year ago are two in my eyes. And I've known you for a long time, uh, completely different people, um, uh, in a lot of different ways, but expect, number one, the, the way that you run, I would say yourself, your self-discipline in your business. Talk to us about, the compulsion to do it is obvious, is obvious. You know, just like you said, your family providing for them, needing to make that change and not being an option for you, uh, you wanting to support your family. But what steps did you take to change your mindset, change the way you ran your business to where now you're a consistent 30, 40 K producer and you have people on your team starting to hit those numbers? Yeah, I think once I realized that, this business is not just about selling life insurance. And I had another friend from another IMO tell me when I was looking to get started, he said, man, if you don't develop yourself, uh, you won't really succeed in this industry. And I've never had another sales job that required that of me besides, hey, go out and do these inspections, right? We're going to give you these leads. We'll pay you a little bit of commission and a, a a bait salary, right? Right. And I think what I realized is this business does really well at exposing you, Hmm. right? You know, and I don't think it's the life insurance industry. I think being self-employed does that where Hmm. it exposes your discipline. It exposes how weak your mentality is. It exposes your comfort zone. 
and how, uh, you know, how big your comfort zone is. And I just had to decide for the sake of my financial future that I had to push through that. But specifically what changed it for me was Ivan uh, and I had a talk just kind of like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Right. I, I'm not going to try to do his accent because yeah. <laughs> I won't do it justice. But in a way that only Ivan could say it, you know, he said, look, you just got to go make a mess. You know, he kind of talked about when he first started, he's like, you're going to drive around. You're going to make a mess. You have to dial the phone. If you do this, 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 and then you go to sleep at night, having done all of that and you didn't hit your goals, that doesn't mean you failed. You just have to get back at it tomorrow. But he's like, you can rest peacefully at night if you do X, Y, and Z. And I went and did them. And that was, uh, I like to say this business is a big snowball effect. At first, you're just trying to get that momentum. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you got a $7,000 uh, commission statement from America, right? Where the most you got was a thousand here, five hundred here, and your your credit card is is past due, right? That's that's pretty much how it went for me. Hmm. So so you so you just had kind of like we were saying, you had your own real come to Jesus moment where you and I love what you said too because you can and you said it at the very beginning and you reinforce it just now. You are constantly controlling the things that you can control. Mm -hmm. obviously who's going to buy, you know, who's been that sale that, you know, you just walk in and they've been looking for it for so long and they almost already know what they want. You just feel like an order taker and it's like 500 a month and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You, you, you can't control when you're going to run into that person or, or the opposite, the person who's not going to get anything. You can't control sometimes even your lead flow, you know, when you're doing like it's it's been up and down and sometimes we're supplementing with different types of leads but you can control your activity on the phone. You can control your schedule. You can control door knocking, working hard. And so you just went ham on all that stuff and it evened out for you. Talk to us just a little bit about how that journey went for you. What were the areas, number one, for you that you felt I am really lacking and you changed those completely? Uh, Controlling my emotions. I would say number one, that's probably my biggest hurdle I have to cross every single day. Mm. You know, it's between meditating and cold showers and working out, just doing hard things consistently. But that's, that's probably the biggest thing that got exposed. Like, holy cow, man, I have about the emotional control of my daughter. She's two. Mm. You know, so once I found that that roller coaster is not something I want to ride for the rest of my life, uh, I had to just minimize that, but I would say that was number one, first and foremost, the, the biggest hurdle I had to jump over. And, and let's go over that real quick. W- what did that look like for you? So emotions, as far as like elaborate a little bit on that and you can, as far as how that was affecting you and what did that, what that change look like? You know, running my, uh, my day-to-day operations based on how I felt, you know, do I feel like keep, you know, dialing the phone more? Do I feel like showing up to this appointment? Oh, this guy gave me a hard time on the phone. He's probably going to be a jerk in the house. Maybe I'm just going to, you know, not go. Right. I didn't do that a lot, but there were times I did that. Um, I don't know if it was lack of confidence or, or what, but then also not riding the highs too long and not riding the lows too long. But I think a lot of this business is perspective. You know, if you, you get two people can have the same thing happen and look at it completely different and have two different outcomes. Sure. And you and I have had lots of talks where you're like, man, I don't know why he, I, he, the person that's talking to me on the phone right now is not the person that I know. Mm. Right? And that's just because a lot of it was the way I was looking at negatives in this business uh, were the wrong way. And when you're new, I have found that because your scale is so small that all of the negatives seem that much worse. Right. Have a long track record of experiencing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And and a great example I have of that. I remember uh, talking to one of like the, the biggest producers in our company. I think he does, he's not right in anymore. You know, his agency is pretty good size, but Rob Richmond, I think last year he wrote just shy of a million. It was like 900,000 something. 
And um, I remember speaking with him at a conference and just getting some advice from him and different things. And I asked him about chargebacks because at that time, I think my, my, my persistency right now is like at 88, 89%. And honestly, it was a little bit worse than that at the time, but not, it wasn't awful, but it affected me so much. Right. Just like you said, like I might have had 10,000 deposited that week, but if I had two thousand dollars of chargebacks, I felt like it was so much like it didn't even really make sense. And I remember talking to him and being like asked what his persistency was and it was really good. And then asked him about chargebacks. He's like, I don't even open those emails. (laughs) He's like, I just I just delete them. And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, dude, he's like. I have like $15,000 a month I need from this. I have like $15,000 a month I need for that. He's like, I have this, this, this. And he's like, I pay those bills and I got the money for that. He's like, I don't, I don't have time to like worry about that. He's like, unless there's like a big problem. And I remember thinking exactly what you're saying. I was like, this guy is on another level. Cause mm-hmm. I'm over here freaking out about these tiny things here. This guy is doing a million a month you know, as an agency, you know, doing all of this, you know, business personally. And he just like elevated himself above like the negatives, the little things in this business. And that's why he's performing at such a high level, Mm -hmm. you know? And so you pretty much made that decision, even though you weren't on that level yet, where you're just like, I'm going to consciously kind of rise myself above like the negatives and just focus on my performance. Yeah, 100%. So much of your success in this business is is what you think of it, not Mm. necessarily what you make of it, right? Mm. And so I told myself, there's no reason why I can't be X, Y, Z. You know, there was a point where I couldn't crack that $30,000 mark. And once I did it, it was like, okay, now I'm a $30,000 producer. Like, that's just who I am. If I do less than 30, I'm unsatisfied. If I do more than 30, I can tell myself, hey, that's who I am. Now I'm trying to get to that 40,000, right? And tell myself, hey, I'm a $40,000 producer. But there's been so many points in the last year where I've told myself, hey, man, if you want X, Y, Z, you've got to be on that level. And one of them was getting an office. I said, hey, man, I want to be able to sit at tables with people and say, we're on the same playing field. You have an office, you have staff, you're a business owner. I am too. So I'm going to go get an office and and have that. Mm. And I'm sitting in it. Right. So right. yeah, a lot of it is just consciously leveling up and then that will manifest itself uh, in the world around you. Okay. So, uh, so obviously, so let's get into the practical side of things here. So that was all phenomenal. So <laughs> talk to us about now, now you're pretty consistently writing, you know, somewhere between 30 and 40,000 a month in premium. Your team is really starting to get rolling here. You hit logo, Last month or the month before? Last month. Last month. You, you did how much as a team? 109. 109. And I think you're, you'll, you'll eclipse that this month. And, and then um, what, what is your normal, what's your schedule now? Talk, well, first off, what's your lead cost to write 30, 40? What, what are you spending on a regular basis? So I'm spending between two and 2,500. Okay. Uh, per week on leads. I run call-in mortgage leads. I have some BPL. I have some record, recurring um, mail drops for mortgage protection. And then I'll sprinkle in uh, internet leads when there's discounts. Okay. So about about 10 to about eight to 10 to write somewhere between 30 and 40. Okay. okay. And then talk to us about your now building other agents to become mm-hmm. successful. I know you have some agents really starting to hit it. Talk to us about bringing someone new in. Um, obviously, you, had, you have a couple people that are warm market that are friends, but you also have quite a few cold market. I think I think all your what your four new writing agents this week are all cold yeah. market, right? So so talk to us a little bit of that process. I know you have a recruiter, you know, who's hiring people. Talk to us about getting people in the door and getting people to start hitting the field. So when it comes to the cold market side, I mean, it, it's like running your business with leads, right? It, it's a numbers game. My mentality is I want to believe in every single person that picks up the phone and I mm-hmm. talk. To. The reality of that is I'm not going to close 100% of those. Mm-hmm. I have to treat them as such. And so there's a, 
I don't know if I'm good at it, but I try to make sure I juggle, hey, you know, you're independent. I'm not going to babysit you. Um, I don't know how good you'll be at this. It's not really for me to decide, but also giving them as much energy as they require to make sure they can be as successful. I don't want anyone to quit on my account, right? If they're just not, if this is just not for them and they don't want to do it and they don't want to work hard, that's on them. But I don't want them to say, hey, my upline didn't help me. Right. When it comes to warm market, man, that's the one thing I wish I would have done uh, sooner, right? But I think it just took me so long in my own mind to feel as though I was being successful that I didn't feel like I could go talk to people about this opportunity that I don't feel like I'm even maximizing. Sure. sure. Part of that, you know, between me, you know, you, Caleb, you guys took 90% of our warm market because we all know the same people. <laughs> so I, I just kind of had to get the, the little bit that was left. You, hey, know, you, so. can, you can be better or you can be first. It's easier to be first. Yeah. Yeah. First <laughs> last, right? yeah. So, kind of, you know, I hired maybe one or two that you guys had even kind of DM. Mm. And I just happened to be closer to them. So they trusted me more. And we had those real talks and now they're crushing it, even yeah. some part-time level. Yeah. And now what I'm seeing is that some of my warm market hires are now starting to hire. So I'm kind of getting those, uh, those grandbabies, so to speak, right. Where right. downlines of downlines and that, man, that's amazing. Uh, just to see them seeing the opportunity for what it is, but then pouring into their own agents. I think someone said, you know, how you, you know, you're successful at something when you can teach someone else to teach someone else. Sure. And I don't by any means feel like I'm that successful in this industry yet, but I am seeing the fruit of, Hey, pouring into someone and then they're turning around and pouring into someone else. 100%. 100%. Well, one, one more question. I want, I want to be respectful of your time. I know I don't want to keep you on too much longer. So you got a lot of stuff going on, but let me, about team building, it's obvious that you understand the psychology, you know, of a successful agent, you know, you kind of mastered that, excuse me, with yourself. Um, and I would say you probably understand it pretty well when it comes to your agents. Talk to us about obviously you recruit a lot of people, you know, you hire, and then some hit the field, some don't, some become successful, some don't. Talk to us about the things you've seen uh, just about agents who make it? What, what, what are characteristics that those agents seem always to have or develop that make them successful here? You know, they are just confident enough just to go figure it out. You know, I would say the ones that have come in and have really crushed it out of the gate, they call me enough. But they mm. don't call me to have me walk them through every step. They call me for things they can't control. They do call me from the house, but outside of that, buying leads, running their appointments, you know, I won't hear from someone that's, you know, uh, there's a guy on my team now, he's actually a hire of a downline of a warm market. Um, and he's, he did uh, eight grand yesterday. And um, it's like, I won't hear from the guy for a couple of days. I don't even know if he's running. And then he'll call me like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to close this $2,500 sale. <laughs> running like 20 appointments a week. He's in college, he used to be a state trooper. Uh, just an incredible, incredible guy. And I think he's going to go close um, another 7,000 AP from one of those houses. He just wow. couldn't, he couldn't get them approved with any of his carriers. Uh, mm. So he thinks this one other carrier will take him once he gets it. So um, yeah, they just are good at just like being independent for what it is and, and just going and figuring it out. Sure. Sure. So, so you, you would say, and, and honestly, I, I love that. And it sounds overly simplistic or almost like a cliche, but yeah. it, it's, it's true. Like you really do need to be, and I know mm -hmm. I say this a lot. So people, you know, that on my team probably roll their eyes when they hear me say it, but you know, this really is, you know, there are so many things over social media, people selling makeup and nutritional supplements, like, Oh, this is my business you know, right. And all that stuff with this and they maybe, and we all kind of, you know, laugh. Cause obviously, you know, it's not, you know, they have a full-time job and maybe they make a couple hundred bucks a month, but this is, I mean, the numbers you're saying you're bringing in, you're spending 10,000 to make 30, 40, you know, you've got employees, you've got an office, you know, you're, you're making a lot of money. You're putting a lot of money back in, into your business. This is a real 
business. And when you're going out to help people as a broker, you're looking at financial situations, you are, you know, uh, helping people protect their families, protect their assets, their homes, uh, the emotional and financial well being of their families. And you have to be a very driven, like person to be a business owner, and to be something where that is so where you are really helping people really motivating people, really getting people on like, this is a real business and you have to go out there and own it. And people that I was just talking to a young man today and he, he called me, reached out for help, not my team or anything. And, and I wouldn't embarrass him. He's a young, he's a young guy. I think he's still a teenager. He's like 18 or 19. <laughs> and he was just like, Oh, he was, you know, just a little bit discouraged. He'd been starting for like a week and had had a rough time on the phones, you know, or something like that. And uh, he was like, well, I'm just going through this. And I was like, Hey man, can I, can I shoot you straight? And he's like, well, yeah, I was like, I think what, and I asked him a little bit of where his activity was at and it wasn't, you know, a hundred percent, you know, where it should be. And I was like, I think you just need to start decide that you need to work, <laughs> you know, uh, and you need to put in the activity and stop making excuses and just decide in your mind that I'm new with this. I've got to really put in the effort if I want to be good and to see the potential and decide that it's worth it and that you're going to bet on yourself. And I was like, your other little questions, like you can get those in a training video. The real, the real thing that I'm going to give you right now is that you just need to, I was like, dude, you're, and obviously many people on here, you have families, you have responsibilities. This guy was still, you know, didn't have much of any responsibilities, no kids, no nothing. I was like, dude, you should be working 15 hours a day. <laughs> if I was 18 and had this opportunity, I would be, you know, this would be in my life. How hard, Sean, did we work selling trash service and lawn care and oh. newspapers during college? <laughs> Look at this, pennies. Yeah, man, to make maybe six, seven, eight hundred bucks a week. Yeah. You know, and we thought and we thought that was great money because we were doing it in 20 hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, but no, man, that while that's that's golden advice. What what are, what's your goal? as a personal producer and as a team for the, for the rest of this year? So my goal right now, uh, I'm going to speak it into existence is to hit hall of fame by Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, and, and so the reason for that is last year we came back from sales conference up there in Indiana or Chicago. And I kind of had to have that real open candid talk with my wife about what it was going to take to be successful at this. And one mm -hmm. part of that was treating it like a job, right? Mm -hmm. And I told her, you know, I don't know what is capable, but give me till Thanksgiving. And that was about beginning of November. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to turn around by Thanksgiving and say, look, you know, you gave me till Thanksgiving and then you gave me another year and, and look where we're at. And I need to do that for my team, uh, if anything. And then um, I'd like to be at, I'd like to be at 300 by the end of the year. That's phenomenal. That's I phenomenal. Think yeah, I think, I think, I think easily done for you. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you, I, I know you're going to hit the hall of fame. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if you shoot past 300 though, uh, by the end of the year. Well, awesome, man. Well, Hey, you're crushing it. I, I'm so happy to see you crushing it. I did not know this was the, the holiday, man. I got to remember the 15th, <laughs> you know, Caleb's birthday. Hey, you know, that'll be the easy way to remember both of them happen. Yeah. Um, and uh, so if you had to give one parting shout, I, I love the way that you think about this business because you, you understand the psychology of it maybe as good as anybody um, that I've ever talked to in FFL. If you had to give one parting shout to kind of the whole scope here, people that are just about to get in, people that are getting started, and people that are now in the trenches like you that are a top producer that are wanting to build an agency uh, maybe, uh, or maybe they're just, you know, trying to just trying to be a top producer. W what is a parting shout that you think would be a blessing to all those people? I would say visualize where you want to be at in three months, six months, a year, and don't let your actions contradict where you want to be or who you mm -hmm. want. So make sure the activity you're putting today is indicative of the person that you believe you can become. <laughs>